So it seems Cinema 4D has a new cloth engine by all the cool cloth videos I'm seeing on social media these days. EG had some threads did a really cool tutorial on how to do different types of cloth animation. And that raised the question for me, is it really that difficult to learn Houdini cloth? So in this video, I'll show you exactly how easy it can be to do cloth in Houdini. Let's go for it. Based on EJ's presentation at NAB, I did three different setups. Let's start with the folding cloth one. So let's drop down a grid, jump in. I want to set this to the YZ plane. So we have it nicely along the Z axis. For me, value of 2 by 0 0.2 worked well. I gave the geometry 20 rows and 150 columns, just so we have a nice high res mesh. And then let's copy these grids, copy and transform. We want to translate it by, I think 0 0.2 works. And let's give three copies. So we have something quite close to what he did in his tutorial. And if we now jump in the front view by hitting space four, we can hit our select tool and we can select our points on the right side. Lay down a group value in your viewport and call this right. Then we do the same for the left. Let's grab these left points and lay down a group and let's call this left. And these will be the points that will pin to our animation. So first of all, let's align this to the center again so we can rotate around the center accordingly. And let's quickly drop down some UVs so we can attach textures to this mesh later. Drop down a null for node hygiene and let's call it in cloth. Then let's set the transformation of these objects. So if we append a transform node and we can rotate this around the Z axis. So here you can see what we're doing if we up that. First of all, let's set the group to the right group and then set the rotation bracket dollar $f minus one. So this means we start with zero and then multiply by three. So it rotates a bit quicker than a value of one for every frame. So now you can see we have this rotation, which obviously on geometry just looks horrible, but it will be nice later. Let's call this maybe rotate right, then copy paste, append it, align. Let's call this rotate left. Let's first set this to the left group by just typing left. And then I want to set this to minus three. So it rotates in opposite direction. So now let's append our vellum cloth node. And this is where it will be turned into actual cloth and not just geometry. So first of all, by trial and error, I found that a varying mesh of a density of 0 0.025 worked well for my mesh. This is trial and error, so feel free to change it. The drag I set to 80 and the tension drag to 0 0.8. This is a tip I picked up from a Houdini server, which I linked below. Let's pin the points to left and right so that animation we did before in the transform nodes will actually be picked up by the cloth. And let's match the animation. I want to set a rather low stiffness so it's not too rubbery and it's more like cloth. So let's set the stretch stiffness to one. Then for the bend stiffness, I want to make it even lower. So let's set this maybe to this value. What we have to do now is attach a vellum solver node. And let's hide the display on this. And in the vellum solver, I gave it five sub steps, but I would try it first with less <laughs> so you don't spend your whole life waiting for it. And I disabled the gravity because I just wanted to be like floating in space. And when we dive into the vellum solver, we can add forces to it as well. So this gives it a bit of a natural feel because unless you're in a vacuum, there will be some like random wind forces on it. I set it to an amplitude of 0 0.5, so it's not too strong. And the swirl size, I set it a bit lower. So it's more like a low frequency noise to 0 0.3. And let's go up and hit save and simulate. So here you can see, we have this nice twisting cloth. If you're getting into sections, it's usually a good idea to up your sub steps. And once you're happy with it, you can just attach a vellum post process. And what you can do here is you can extrude by the thickness. So the thickness you set in the vellum cloth in here. And now you can see we have a nicely extruded thick mesh and we can subdivide it as well if we want. So we set the subdivision on, you get a more high resolution mesh. So that's it for the first one. Let's attach a null without twisting, we can call it, and jump up. Let's do the second one, the falling one, and let's call it falling, and jump in. First thing, let's set a grid to the right size, so x, y, let's put it at 0 0.3, then I give it 100 rows and only two columns. So you have a piece of geometry that isn't subdivided in the middle, so it will help a lot with the folding kind of trick. Then I transformed it just ever so slightly. So when it falls down, it doesn't land straight on. 
So just is a little bit of center. I think something like two degrees is fine on the z-axis. And let's append a match size node. And what we do with this is we set the justify y to min, so it's on the floor. And then we give it an offset of 0 0.5. So later we can just scale up the size of our ribbon and it will always stay at the same offset from the floor. So very handy. Then let's hide the other object. Then we could just attach a vellum node again. So vellum configure cloth. And now we set up our cloth. So mass unchanged for this one. Edge link scale 0 0.05. Then again, a normal drag I set to 80, the tangent drag to 0 0.8, the stiffness in the band, the damping ratio is 0 0.1. And the band one, I changed to a value of 10 with a damping ratio oh. of 0 0.1. And these seem to work well for me. So stature vellum, vellum solver. In the vellum solver, I set the static threshold to something very high. Let's enable the ground position so it can actually collide with the floor. And if you see now, we have some cloth folding down. It's a bit twisty and it like falls around. And it's, that could be a look you're going for. But in order to make it like a bit more static, I'm gonna up the static threshold and the velocity damping. And if we animate it now, it stays still a lot more. And then lastly, I can increase the substeps to maybe three. And let's simulate. And now you get a really nice, smooth folding animation. Lastly, like always, you can attach a Venom Pulse process. So we can extrude by thickness again, and maybe we can give it a subdivision so it's a bit smoother. And that's it for this one. So the last one is this kind of hose, like twisting around, uh, which is roughly inspired by EJ's one, obviously. And basically with this one, we want to start with a grid again. All about grids today. And let's call this one the, the circle. For this one, I set the size to 0 0.1 by 3. 300 rows, something quite high res again. So you get a nice, so you get a nice like square grid. I've attached all the UVs on this. So we'll get UVs for later. Then a match size node. And this one, we want to justify the Z to the min axis. So it's nicely aligned like that. Then a transform node. With this one, we want to offset it on the X axis, just like for 0 0.2. Then we can have a copy and transform node. And what we do with this one, I have created 16 copies in my preview. And what we want to do is we want to rotate it around on this axis but we always want to have a full circle. So what we can do is we can copy this parameter and then say 360 divided by whatever number we have there. So base relative reference. And now we'll always have a full circle for this one. And then I want to output the copy numbers. So we can use this attribute to color it. So attach a color node, ramp from attribute, and we can set it to the primitive and we can set it to copy num. And the max is paste relative reference again. So how many copies we use will always uh, be up to date. And if we disable the UVs, you can see we have it coming from zero to white now. And we can give it a random, maybe like an infrared, kind of like color pattern. It doesn't really matter. You can shade this later in your shader graph in whatever render you use. Then I want to pin the base group. So let's group this by bounding box. So disable the base group set it to points, set it to bounding region, and just decrease the size of the Z points, and set it to zero. So we always just grab the first points on here. So no matter what you put into it, it will always stay up to date. And let's change the orientation. Pen a transform. And again, what we do here is we set a slide rotation. I don't want to rotate too much for this, but you can just see it will rotate a bit. And I just want to rotate the point group we just created, group one. Maybe should name this pin. and. Play this to pin. Then append a vellum cloth again. Here I set the density to 0 0.25 of the mass. Then I want to pin the points again, match animation. Then the stiffness I kept the same and the bend stiffness I kept the same as well. So let's attach a vellum solver and let's dive into the vellum solver and attach a pop force again. So we give it some nice wind. So as this waving in the wind kind of animation. In here, I want to set a quite high turbulence amplitude and I want to give it some wind along the Z axis so the wind will move like this. And I want to decrease the swirl scale so we get kind of like a lower frequency noise. Then let's go up again. For the final render, I increase the subsets to five, but let's keep it low for now just to simulate. Disable the gravity and up the simulation cache a bit so we're all still on RAM. And then let's hit play. 
So now you can see we get this really nice kind of like cloth waving in the wind kind of animation. And if we play a bit further, you can see these cloth starts colliding with each other as well and get these really nice intersections. And again, like our previous examples, we can just attach a post process again, just to extrude the thickness of the cloth and maybe subdivide it if we want to. It's quite high res already, but it's up to you, up to your needs. And that's it. Just three quick ways to do these kind of cloth simulations. And hopefully you can see by now that Houdini is not that difficult to learn, especially not for cloth. And if you like that, please hit the like button and I'll see you in the next one.